Back in 2006, Sydney was at the height of a very long and severe drought, known as the Millennium Drought. Despite having very large water storages from Warragamba Dam and a number of smaller dams, we were rapidly running out of water. It was clear that we needed to do something to shore up water supplies. But what? Many solutions were suggested. One of the first was to build a new dam to supply Sydney from the Shoalhaven River 170 kilometres away. Some people suggested new laws to require increased use of rainwater tanks on homes and commercial buildings would be effective. Personally, I was in favour of increased use of recycled water from sewage treatment plants. Recycled water could be used strictly for non-drinking purposes such as watering gardens and flushing toilets but that would require building a whole separate pipe system to deliver it separately from the drinking water supply. Alternatively, recycled water could be highly purified and then used to top up the existing drinking water supply. Others again were in favour of building a seawater desalination plant to remove salt from seawater before adding that to our drinking water supply. There were a large number of options put forward and they all seem to have advantages and disadvantages. So how should we decide between them? Should we simply choose the one with the lowest cost? But what about the environmental impacts and the loss of land, such as those that come with damming a river like the Shoalhaven? Some options are more energy intensive than others. So should we compare the greenhouse gas emissions? Some might be more reliable as a drought proof supply than others. We could consider the water quality that might be produced by each method and the associated public health risks. What about public acceptance? Some people might not like the idea of drinking recycled water. All of these questions represent criteria on which basis we might select between various options. And this type of problem with many potentially important criteria is called a multi-criteria decision. Formalised techniques have been developed to help structure, analyse and ultimately solve a multi-criteria decision. And this field, this field is called Multi-Criteria Decision Analysis, or MCDA. We'll look at some examples of MCDA in class. But in preparation, I'd like you to think of some more about this example of Sydney's drinking water supply. Can you list four separate criteria by which you would want to assess the preferability of various water supply options? And can you rank those criteria in terms of relative importance to you as a decision maker? I'll be interested to compare what you come up with in class.